Chris Houston, are you ready for the event? I'm ready for the event. Military Officer Magazine, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Amanda Dolashinsky with Military Officer Magazine. How do you hear me? Hey, Amanda, I have you loud and clear. Hi, Colonel Kimbrough. Thank you so much for giving us a peek inside the International Space Station. I know this isn't your first time up there, so let's just jump right into it. What is your favorite view from inside the International Space Station? Well, we have a lot of modules up here to look at and uh, to mess around in, I guess, and to work in. And so it's always great uh, when you come around and you, you see another crew member doing some really great science or, or doing a maintenance activity. We have a couple windows up here that you might have heard of, and those are really fantastic to look out and see our beautiful planet Earth. What kinds of experiments is your crew doing that's going to help NASA get to Mars? Well, we just got up here a few weeks ago, so we haven't really got into a lot of those things that are going to help us for future exploration, um, although there are a bunch of them up here, but we'll dive into those um, here in midsummer. looks like July and August. Um, we'll kind of hit a bunch of those experiments that will help us. Uh, we're also doing a lot of neat things. Um, some of our crew members right now are working on a thing called celestial immunity, which is going to help people, you know, help everybody back on Earth to, to figure out what kind of things we can be immune to and, and maybe uh, ways to combat certain viruses. How does the flight on the Dragon compare to your time flying Apaches for the Army? Well, completely different rides, but uh, both amazing machines. Um, I really love flying the Apaches uh, many years ago now, but uh, flying the Dragon was really incredible. When those engines lit um, just about three weeks ago, uh, we all just felt an incredible sense of power underneath us, and uh, we knew we were going to go somewhere really fast and really enjoyed the ride. The nine-minute or so ride to get us to space was really fantastic. And I know you've worked with international partners on deployments before. How does this mission compare? Well, one of my crew members is uh, the same as last, and that's Thomas Pesquet from France. So we know each other very well. Um, I also flew with a Japanese astronaut on my previous mission, and uh, we have Aki Hoshide, who's the station commander now from Japan, so, uh, uh, and a couple cosmonauts as well. So that hasn't changed uh, no matter what vehicle we're flying on. So it's really fantastic to fly with people from different countries, to learn their cultures, and uh, learn you know, just what makes them tick, and uh, learn how to do things better, honestly. How did your military training help you prepare for your mission in space? Well, you know, a lot of our military folks, of course, are, you know, you learn and train in really um, austere environments, I'll call it that, so places where you don't have a whole lot, and it really is a nice, I think that those kind of traits transferred over well up here. I mean, we do have some really great resources up here on the space station, but we are very remote, um, and we're in a dangerous environment, just like a lot of our military folks are. So a lot of those things transfer over um, very nicely. You know, the concepts of teamwork, of uh, taking responsibility for your actions, are also big components that I learned in the military that uh, have transferred over very nicely to be a good astronaut here at NASA. Now, obviously, you have found a really interesting career after your time in the military. What's your advice for other service members who are getting ready to transition into the civilian workforce? Yeah, mine certainly was unique. About half of my time in NASA was active duty, and then uh, and then the other half now, actually, about a third has been um, as a civil servant. So it's a it was a nice transition. I didn't really change jobs, so that was a really nice deal. There are plenty of those out there um, in the military. I know, so uh, you know, just look for all those good deals, so to speak. Um, and of course, you had to work hard for, um, to get where I am, and, and you know, other folks are no different. So, so, whatever you're passionate about, whatever you're really interested in, I would uh, encourage those folks to pursue those kind of avenues and uh, do your best to hopefully get there. So, I know that we are looking toward the future, and private rides to space might become a reality. What do you think about the average person being able to catch a ride to go to space? 
I think it's incredible. I hope it actually works, um, and I hope it comes to fruition here in the next few years. Um, we're supposed to be flying the first non-professional uh, astronauts here in the fall with SpaceX, and so that should be, it's called Inspiration4, just a couple day mission to get those folks up into orbit. So I look forward to hearing their feedback. And it's going to be fantastic. I mean, when I go, after I come back and I speak to people about being in space, I really want them to have the chance to experience what I'm talking about. So hopefully this will be a way to open that door. Now, I know the U.S. has not launched a crewed uh, mission to space since 2011, I believe. So what does it mean to you to see the U.S. starting to launch and be part of these missions again? Well, that's fantastic. I hope it's a great sense of pride for our whole nation. Um, I was there just about a year ago when uh, the first crewed mission launched out of Florida. And since 2011, like you mentioned, that was Bob and Doug when they flew on the first test flight of the Crew Dragon. And that was really exciting to be there for that moment for me. And then uh, just less than a year later, I was doing, doing the same thing myself. I never would imagine I was in that position. But again, I hope it's a, a great sense of pride for our entire nation that we're launching and we have the capability again to take humans to low Earth orbit. Great. And sir, I know that military members can look back and think about mentors who've helped them be successful in their careers. Do you have somebody like that that you really look up to that helped guide you on your successful career? Yeah, I had many um, incredible leaders along the way throughout my Army career. Um, General Jones, General Packett, to name a few right now, General Phipps, uh, General Crutchfield were all great mentors of mine, uh, Robert Douthit as well. So, you know, the list goes on and on. I was just blessed with great leaders um, ahead of me and uh, just learned a lot from them and then have leaned on their advice ever since. Great. Sir, thank you so much. Is there anything else that you'd like to share with our MOA members back home? Well, we're going to have a great mission up here. I think you know we're up here for about six months, so we're just getting started. It's going to be a great time up here with our colleagues. We're going to be doing some incredible research and science, along with fixing this amazing facility up here because things break. Um, it's about 20 years old now, so uh, we get to repair a lot of things as well. So we're going to enjoy our time uh, up here, but looking forward to getting back home to our family and friends. And want to wish all the military members out there um, a, a safe journey on whatever you're doing. We're uh, thinking about you all the time and uh, really appreciate your service to our incredible nation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ken Colonel Kimbrough. I appreciate your time. Station, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes the event. Thank you to all participants.